Hello, my name is Ryan Jang, a fourth year medical student at Texas A&M University in the United States. This project, Predictors for Transcranial Magnetic Neuromodulation in MS Patients with Neurogenic Voiding Dysfunction, was conducted at Houston Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas, and my principal investigator is Dr. Kavari. There is none to disclose, and this project was funded by Dr. Kavari's K23 award from NIDDK. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic autoimmune disease of the CNS, which leads to inflammation-induced demyelination, axonal loss, and neuronal injury. Based on a report in 2016, there were over 2.2 million prevalent cases of MS worldwide. As mentioned earlier, MS affects the central nervous system, which plays a crucial role in the nutrition cycle. Voiding dysfunction is one of the most common neurogenic lower urinary tract dysfunction in MS populations. Voiding dysfunction is reported in 10% of MS patients at disease onset and 75% by the 10-year mark. Symptoms include urinary hesitancy and retention, weak stream, and incomplete emptying. Unfortunately, options are limited when it comes to effective treatments for VD, especially for MS patients. One treatment option with moderate effectiveness is self-catheterization, but can be significantly morbid or not feasible for MS patients to perform depending on the disease progress. To address this problem, we have considered an intervention beyond the genital urinary system. Transcranial Rotating Permanent Magnet Stimulator, TRPMS, is a wearable and portable cortical neuromodulation device. It allows for multifocal stimulation simultaneously. It consists of assemblies of cylindrical magnets attached to battery-operated direct current motors, which can generate an oscillating magnetic field. This field will depolarize the neuronal cell membranes, resulting in net cortical excitation or inhibition depending on the stimulus parameters. For this pilot study, we proposed to stimulate regions that have been known to be involved in voiding initiation and inhibit specific regions to promote relaxation to facilitate urine passage. We refined the list based on literature with five regions to modulate. So with this technology in our hand, in the list of areas to modulate, we wanted to answer the following question. Are there any baseline clinical parameters that can predict successful response to this novel transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy. To study this, we recruited 10 female patients with MS and VD. Neurogenic voiding dysfunction was defined as the following. Objective and subjective baseline clinical parameters were collected prior to the treatment. Each patient received 10 treatment sessions within a two-week period. A successful response to TRPMS was defined as improvement in percent PVR over bladder capacity or increase in the Liverpool nomogram percentile post-treatment. The patients were then assigned to a responders or non-responders group. Among 10 women with MS and neurogenic VD, there were six responders and four non-responders. The first notable finding was statistically lower volume at first sensation of bladder filling. At this point, we could not neglect the possibility that responders might have smaller bladder capacity. So we analyzed the MCC as well, and it turned out that there was no significant difference between the two groups. Therefore, we could not conclude that the lower volume at first sensation was due to having a smaller bladder. For this reason, we looked elsewhere to find possible explanations. We took a look at subjective clinical parameters to better understand the difference in the bladder status. The American Urological Association symptom score shown on the right side did not show a significant difference. However, the consequences domain of the neurogenic bladder symptom score was significantly better in the responders group. The MBSS is a validated questionnaire and the consequences domain deals with pain associated with urination or using catheter, UTI, renal stones, and bladder medication reliance. 
and the significantly lower subscore in this domain reflects less severe neurogenic lower urinary tract dysfunction in the responders group. Therefore, based on the objective and subjective clinical data, we concluded that the significantly lower volume at the first sensation of bladder filling could be partially due to more preserved bladder function with less severe neurogenic lower urinary tract dysfunction. The second remarkable finding was the number of deliveries. Even though there was a significantly lower number of deliveries in the responders group, we evaluated this finding carefully. Since pelvic floor muscle dysfunction is common with pregnancy and delivery, we thought that it could be masking the therapeutic effect of TRPMS. Moving on to the other parameters, the expanded disability status scale is a method to quantify disability in MS. However, the disability burden of MS alone did not seem to have a significant contribution to successful response. Additionally, there was no statistical difference in PVR and presence of detrusor sphincter dyssynergia between the two groups. In conclusion, TRPMS showed therapeutic effect in more than half of the participants, and we identified possible predictors for successful response to TRPMS in both objective and subjective baseline parameters. And most importantly, results from this study could provide the foundation and basis for inclusion criteria for future clinical trials further investigating therapeutic effects of TRPMS, a novel technology. I would like to give special thanks to Dr. Kavari for her mentorship and support and also to my dear colleagues. Thank you.